Hey there, how's it going? Sponsorship on YouTube is pretty common. Usually a 30 to 60 second segment is placed into your video and that's about it. But sometimes you get to do something pretty fun. I'm sure some of you know that before the pandemic, I worked in advertising. And if you didn't know, before the pandemic, I worked in advertising. My favorite campaigns were always the ones that were more than just, here's a thing, please buy. So when I was contacted by a new energy drink called Root about a stream and video sponsorship to make a game, I was interested right away. My challenge is to do a personal six hour game jam to make a game for Root live on stream and then make a video about the process like I do with pretty much every other game that I make. So they wanna pay me to do what I pretty much always do, only they wanna to get to pick the theme and the subject. Plus, I get to talk about working with a brand's identity and image while designing a game that fits around their messaging. If you ask me, that's win-win, and here's how I go about it. The initial ask was really simple. Root would like to sponsor one of my Twitch streams, and during that time, I would make a jam-style game with the overall theme of Root, with the added possibility that the game may end up on the Root website. First thing to do is to do some research so you know what the brand or product is all about. In this situation, Root is a functional nootropic performance beverage that provides enhanced focus, nutrition, hydration, and improved performance without the jitters. It's an energy drink for those that sit in front of a computer all day, specifically created for programmers and coders. I'm gonna throw designers in there too. Without all the sugars and preservatives, there's even stuff in it to help your eyes. Plus, after my own heart, Root has a fantastic retro game aesthetic that hits me square in the nostalgia. The cans all have fantastically different designs inspired by the games I played growing up and immediately I wanted to make an arcade-style high-score game. I pitched the idea that if the game is going to be on the website, what if visitors could get something more out of it than just a bit of fun? Discount codes are pretty common in these kind of promotions. I have one in the description of this video that gets you 20% off your order today. Hint, hint, check it out. But not everyone that visits the site will have seen this video, and they may want a discount code also. So what if at the end of the game, you got a different value discount code based on your score? We'll set the values based on the difficulty of the score that the players achieve, and that way we can encourage replayability if the player doesn't get the best one possible. With the plan all set, it was just time to wait for the stream and figure out what I was gonna make. I was sent a few cases of Root right before the stream, and look at these cans. They really are cool. I still have the Pac-Man one sitting on my desk as decoration. It's got a great citrus flavor, and I can confirm that after drinking them for a while, no jitters. I made Root versions of my stream overlays, and then it was time to have some fun. I started with the best of intentions. We need to make this game not incredibly difficult. It needs to be fast. Also, it needs to be something that's really simple for me to kind of put together. Um, I mean, again, we don't have a ton of time and I want to make it look good. So we're treating this like a three hour jam. Effectively, we're going to treat it like a three hour uh, challenge that we do. And that way we can have get the game hopefully done in like three hours. And then we can spend the ex last three hours just polishing the heck out of it. Right. Just just making it shine because we want to make it cool. And what was my simple game idea that we could pull off in a handful of hours? Donkey Kong. Well, not really Donkey Kong, but Donkey Kong like. I had recently watched a video about Donkey Kong high score records, and since we were doing old arcades, it was just kind of stuck in my head. I made the common mistake that most modern game designers do thinking about older games. I made the assumption that the game was a lot simpler than it actually is. You ever done that with a project? Nah, this isn't going to take very long. It's a super simple premise. Yeah. I know how to make a platformer character. I can make a checker to see if you've jumped over a target, and I can add a score when you do so. Then I hit a problem that was about to become a reoccurring theme. This isn't very fun yet. So I began to note down the different elements I would need to bring in to make the whole game work together. Power-ups are a given. I wanted to not copy Donkey Kong exactly. So let's jazz up the idea of ladders with my favorite and yours, bounce pads. Looking back on it now, I was just adding things because I thought I needed them. But I still did not have a good understanding of what the actual game flow would be or what I was doing with it. This is not a good state to be in at the moment, but Chad and I were having a ton of fun just talking about different ideas and brainstorming, and I left all the problems to future me. Present me is going to make bounce pads and power-ups. You know what? Make that two power-ups. One power-up will make you run faster and jump higher, while the other one will work like the hammer from Donkey Kong or the star from Mario. And after adding in all these pieces, the game still really wasn't that fun. So once again, we're going to leave that problem to future me, and we're going to go work on art. Root has these cute little characters called spammers that they use all over the place. And I thought they would work perfect as the enemies that you would need to jump over. I'm sure I'll get comments about this down below, because I got it from my Twitch chat a whole bunch when we first started talking about Donkey Kong. Everyone kept saying that the cans can be the barrels you have to jump over, but here's the thing. Root cans are the product that we're showing off. In a branded game, the one thing you don't want to do is have the product be the thing that defeats you. It's just kind of a no-no in my opinion. So the root can will be the power-up that adds speed and jump height. It's an energy drink after all. 
To stick with the branding and programming theme, I made the second power up the square brackets pulled directly from the root logo. And while I'm pulling elements, the at symbol is perfect to use for the player character. It ties directly into the branding, and in a lot of retro ASCII graphics computer games, the at symbol is pre-established as being the player character. For the big bad enemy that spawns the others, I went with the one thing that every programmer fears. Or at least it was the running joke that I had with the programmers at my old company. There's always a missing or rogue semicolon. Again, to fit with Root's pre-existing branding and messaging, I'm trying to keep everything as coding or retro game inspired as I can. So wherever possible, if I can make a nod or tip my hat somewhere towards something programming related, it works. The ground tiles I tried to make look like scaffolding from Donkey Kong, as well as taking inspiration from the bounce pads from Super Mario Bros. 3. But now it's the worst part of the day, that sad moment when present me silently transforms into future me. And I have to say, every time I become future me, man do I hate past me, and that guy is a jerk. Past Vimlark made all of these pieces, and now it's my job to figure out how to put them all together. And yeah, that didn't end up going so great. The jumping over enemies to score was feeling really boring, so I decided to pull from another classic game or two. I cut the jumping over enemies to score and made it jumping on the enemies instead. The player was getting flung around all over the place with all the bounce pads, so I tried putting timers on them so they wouldn't go off quite as often. I tried the enemies moving in different directions whenever they landed on the ground. I added screen wrapping, a goal to protect at the bottom of the screen, but alas, to no avail. My time on the stream was up, and the game has no flow, no sound, no polish, and worst of all, no fun. I ended the stream feeling pretty defeated and really bummed with myself for not having something remotely playable. Luckily, Root is a super cool and laid-back company. They were very happy with the stream and really glad that everyone had fun. It really was a good time, which is one of the reasons that I didn't finish. Too much chatting and enjoying of conversations with everybody. I definitely lost focus on the objective and got distracted by ideas and conversations with Twitch chat. I will also say, from the get-go, I knew that I was going to have to do more work off-stream to add in codes and extra things anyway, so I knew I was going to be doing more off-stream, so it wasn't a huge worry to me. But I had definitely hoped to have a much more solid foundation at the end of the stream. I had already had plans because the day after this, Ludum Dare started, and I took a couple of day break to make a game in 48 hours for that. The break was nice because it let me reset and come back to the game with fresh eyes afterwards. But with Ludum Dare done, it was time to get back and figure out how in the world I was going to make this mess fun. The movement's okay, but the jumping on enemies feels pretty lackluster. At this point, I abandoned the Donkey Kong influence altogether, and delved more into the Mario Bros. arcade game where Mario would hit the ground underneath the enemies and then go up and kick them off. I added the ability to jump up and bump the blocks, which is pretty simple. Made a quick update to the spammer sprite, so now they'll flip over when they get hit by a moving tile. Then, if you jump up and touch them while they're upside down, you knock them off the screen. Great, just one little problem. It's still not very fun. Hitting the enemies from underneath and then having to run around, jump up, and then knock them over just started to get really tedious. Then I just finally had to call it. Just didn't work. But what if hitting them from underneath just finished the job? I know, so simple, right? This really helped the pacing and the enjoyment of defeating the enemies. But a problem did arise. If I sit right here and jump over and over again, nothing can get by. I take out everything without moving. I can fix that, so I made some bricks that act like a full solid block that don't get bumped when you jump into them. This helped immensely, and I continued playing around with the level layout until the very end. Adding in these solid blocks made it so the player had to move around to different areas so they could attack the enemies as they came in. At this point, I had a better vision, and I was trying to rein everything in a bit more. To keep the game more focused, I combined the two power-ups into one for the most part. Picking up the root can will now give you the star power-up, as well as make you move a little faster. I removed the jump height advantage because I already gave the player a higher variable jump height. For the score, bumping the spammers normally will give a plus 5 to your score. If you have the power-up though, you get a massive increase because you'll get 10 times the number of spammers you've taken out. So the first one will give you 10, the second gives you 20, the third 30, and so on. Because of this, I had to rework the timers a little bit, so in the end, you get 7 seconds of power-up, and the root can will respawn every 16 seconds. I added a 60-second timer to the game. When it hits zero, you're taken to the score screen and given your discount code based on your score. This page isn't fully set up at this point. As you can see, the high score saving isn't working. Also, that is not the correct code, it's just a placeholder. I didn't like the root power-up disappearing and reappearing, because after you pick it up the first time, you may not realize it comes back and part of the fun of the game is figuring out when to use the power-ups to get a higher score. So I made a small timer animation for the can so you would see as it comes back and know when it's going to be available. This should let the player know at a quick glance when they can start letting the spammers pile up again so they can get a big combo. I added sound effects, a lot of polish like screen shake and particles, a background, as well as a lose condition. To add a bit more tension, if a total of three spammers make it to the computers at the bottom left and right of the screen before the timer counts down to zero, the player will lose and have to try again. My reasoning for this is so the player can't just let all of the characters pile up and then hit them all at once really easily. 
And the game is actually fun to play now. There's a nice balance of making sure you take out the spammers so they don't get to your computers, but also letting them pile up as much as you can, so you can grab the root power up and get as high of combo as possible. I did also forget to mention that the three different types of spammers now do different things. The green ones just move slowly as normal, the blue ones move faster, and the orange ones move a little bit faster than the green ones, and whenever they land on the ground, they randomly choose a direction to go either left or right, so they don't follow the same path at all times. At this stage, the last thing I had to do was add in a menu with the how to play instructions, and the game is pretty much finally done. Now, I failed my initial challenge of a personal six hour game jam where I make a game live on stream. And you know what? Sometimes you fail at things and that's okay, but it's only really a failure if you don't learn anything from it. So what happened here? I think the thing is I didn't properly research the game I was basing my core concept off of. Donkey Kong actually has a lot going into it besides just jumping over barrels that makes it fun. And I definitely did the, it's an old arcade game, it's simple, I know what it's all about thing that was a, definitely a huge mistake. The second mistake I made was that I didn't really properly plan out my entire game flow and process at the start of the jam. I just started making things with the very loosest of ideas, and because of that I just kind of kept adding things when something didn't feel right hoping that would fix it which then caused me to overscope the game for the time I had available. It really goes to show that even if you do a lot of game jams and make a lot of games in short time frames, overscoping is always something that can happen and we need to be aware of it. In the end, I am really happy with how the game turned out. I'm just not as happy with my performance live on stream and it's something I'll work on. In the game, if you find it too difficult, you can play just to survive and try to keep the spammers from getting to the computers in the end. But as you get better at the game, you can employ a good push your luck strategy and try to get a really high score. The game is now live on the Root website, and as a special bonus, Root wanted me to put in my own high score for a special discount code. So the first 20 people that can score over 700 points, mine was actually 750, but 700 just seemed like a better cutoff, will get a special bonus discount code of 30% off on their next order. Remember, my own 20% discount code and link to the game are still in the description, so even if you can't beat my score, don't worry, you're still going to get a great deal. I hope you've enjoyed this look at how I approach making a branded game. I had a lot of fun making this, and I wanted to give a huge thank you to Root for making this all happen. I worked in advertising for nearly a decade, and I've gone through this process more times than I can count. Root was an absolute pleasure to work with and super supportive and enthusiastic throughout the entire process. So once again, if you want to support me, play a fun game, and get a great energy drink that's not loaded with a ton of sugar, check out the links in the description and use the checkout code VIMLARK20 to get a 20% discount. Thank you all very much for watching. I would like to thank my amazing Patreon supporters, especially Abishan, Clone13, Daniel Martin, David Scott, Nightfall, Kevin Haugau, Kormai, Liam Sorta, MLK, Matsi Makes, Nazar Salim, Salty Pretzel, Scott Hansen, Soapy Gnome, Straight Up Gruntled, and Warren Steven Rose. You're all amazing people, and I cannot thank you enough for the support. If you would like to catch the game making process live, please stop by my Twitch stream at twitch.tv slash vimlark, or you can message me on Twitter or join the Discord with a lot of other really cool people. I hope you're all healthy and safe wherever you are, and I will talk with you next time. Have a good one. Later.